Hi YouTube. So today I received the paint from Volvo. So I'm going to repaint the excavator. Uh, I won't film that I repaint it because I have already shown you how I did it. So I'm going to repaint it off camera. Oh, by the way, uh, now is a good time to show you why exactly I use this glue. Now, this is a gel glue, uh, which means it's pretty soft. Uh, it won't be as hard as the super glue. So, this glue acts more like some sort of silicone glue, but it's not as strong as the silicone glue. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to take off the roof now. If you remember, I had uh, a little bit of this glue on the underside of this. Now I'm, I have to take this off in order to paint it. So I'll show you how easy it is to work with this glue. You see? <laughs> now this is cool thanks man really really appreciate it <laughs> suddenly I feel a lot more Swedish <laughs> thanks man <laughs> you know who you are so after opening the package and seeing the original Volvo colors, I decided to repaint the whole machine. Luckily, the sun is outside today, so there's really no reason not to uh, paint the whole thing. <laughs> so I was able to take off the safety rails. That was easy. And I took off the tracks. I don't plan on painting those and I'll show you the rest. So I began painting the top floor and of course the roof on the cabin. I paint those inside just because I don't want the yellow dust to fly over on the gray parts. setting outside I'm going to finish the yellow parts and then finally I will mask out the yellow fields on the overcarriage and finish that so I'll skip ahead now and I'll do the painting off camera see you soon So there you have it, uh, the machine looks much better with its original colors, of course. So now what I want to do next, I want to start putting on the electronics so we can get the arms and the bucket and of course the tracks to work. And uh, we have to put on the decals, I'm still waiting for my buddy to make them. Uh, and there's a few smaller details still missing that I haven't printed yet. So let me get around to that and I'll see you soon. This is the motors that I use to move the arms and the bucket. Uh, this one in particular has 266 RPM at 12 volts. Now the plan was using this motor 
from here to move the stick. But first I have to create a motor mount to sit inside here. Now I want to, I want I want to make the motor mount out of steel. So that way I'm sure it will handle all the stress. So let's get to it. The idea is to drill a couple of holes here and then put some screws in to keep this motor here and then uh, since this one is pushing the stick outwards we have to make a brace that keeps the motor down because it wants to do this right when it, when it gets some tension here or some pressure after pushing it will go like this so we're going to have to make a brace here and put some screws in here Okay, so I drilled the holes on the boom right here, three millimeter, and these holes are two and a half millimeter. So the plan is to not have any nuts on the back side here because they don't fit. So I'm going to use this and screw the screws straight into it. So that's the first motor uh, mount in place. Now I'm going to make the brace over here. Now it's already 
pretty solid, but it won't be solid enough, so I have to make that brace. I'll try to swap out these uh, bolts later, uh, they're just there to hold everything in place right now. So this is actually the next step. Uh, this is the universal coupler that I will use. You might notice it has a 6mm end and an 8mm end. Uh, the 6mm is going on the motor, like so. and then. We have a 8mm threaded rod that we're going to put in here and the idea with this is to keep everything uh, balanced when the motor spins. This one will help keep uh, the threaded rod in balance. Also this will help the, the threaded rod to move up and down when it extends the stick. So now that the coupler is in place, uh, the next thing we need to figure out is how long the threaded rod will be. So I've put the stick in the most inverse position for the motor. Uh, now I can measure between this point and this point. And now I know what the maximum length for the threaded rod can be. Seems it's my lucky day. Uh, this one is exactly the length I'm looking for. So we're going to mount this one. Everything just feels like a test that I fail so depressed when I can't seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by y'all. Okay, so now our next step will be to create a pipe. I use brass pipes, uh, I cut them to the length I want. Now I already know the length here, we need about 18 or 19 centimeters. Yeah, 18, you see? So we're going to cut it uh, at 19. Uh, and I'll show you how I make them. So here's our pipe. This is a 12 millimeter outer diameter and a 10 millimeter inner diameter. Let's mark where to cut it. Well, let me turn on the lights. There. Now this is a pipe cutter. These are very nice to have. 
uh, they will create a clean cut and they're very fast to cut the pipes too. So this is the pipe that I will mount in these holes and it will have the threaded rod on the inside like so and we're going to mount the nut for the threaded rod on this end I'll show you this is the nut for the threaded rod as you can see it's got four mounting holes I'm gonna use those mounting holes so what I do is I cut the pipe it's hard to explain, I'll just show you how I do it. I cut the pipe like this. You gotta... how do I explain this? Uh, you gotta pretend that this is a banana. You gotta go full-on monkey mode and then just pretend this is a banana. You see? You bend these uh, ears out. And you gotta be careful though, because this is brass. Uh, it breaks easily. You see? Now this, this nut will fit on there, right? Then we just uh, drill a few holes and then put some bolts in. Okay, so the first actuator or the screw cylinder is finished, or the concept of it is finished. Now, I'm missing a little part here uh, that will sit around this uh, pipe and also keep it centered. So, I haven't printed that yet. Now, here you can see how this system works. Uh, the motor spins, the universal spins the threaded rod which in turn moves the nut in or out and that pushes the stick right so I'm running out of time today so unfortunately I have to end the video right here uh, I'll do the other two screw cylinders off camera it's pretty boring to watch and it's just the same process over and over again so when the next video comes out, the, both the other screw cylinders might might be finished. So, anyway, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.